Welcome, everyone, to the Irish Breakdown Podcast. Thank you all so much for joining us. We have an exciting one for you today. A little interview, Mr. Glenn James, who is the father of Braylon James, star wide receiver out of the state of Texas for the 2023 cycle. Before we get into the interview with Glenn, I want you to please like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and share this podcast. He's going to give us a little behind the scenes on everything that's been happening with Braylon since he committed to Notre Dame, you know, about a, a little over a month ago. And it's I know it's been an exciting time. So, Glenn James joining the show. Glenn, I appreciate you again, man, for, for joining us. How's everything been going on your end? Great. Thank you for having me, man. I appreciate you guys extending the offer for me to come out and speak on Braylon. Thank you guys oh, for having me. Oh, no, man. We're, we're really excited about it. Now that we're getting such a – I mean, we're up to, you know, uh, I think we're – well, we're at 12, rec- uh, 12 commits right now, 13 if we're listening tomorrow. So I don't want to tease that out for everybody. But it's <laughs> – it's moving, man. It's moving. I mean, Notre Dame's putting together a great class. Obviously, Braylon is a huge part of that for a lot of different reasons, which I'm going to get into during this show. But, Glenn, just from your perspective, navigating this recruiting process, because I, I had the opportunity to talk to Braylon early on when I just started in January, and I felt like at that point he really liked Notre Dame, but it was more like a heavy interest than like a, yeah, this ball's rolling type of situation. So can you take me through just a little bit of the recruiting and how quickly maybe this got involved involved with Notre Dame and start to heat up on Braylon's end and your and your family's end? Well, speaking on the Notre Dame, uh, last summer we were trying to get down to visit when the dead period was up. I guess it was in the summer of June. So the old previous receiver coach, man, we tried to set up a little visit, but the guy never returned, got back with us. So we kind of like just put it on the side, you know, okay, you know, he didn't get back with us. Maybe he don't like you. So we just kind of just, you know, pushed Notre Dame on the side. But then the beginning of the year when January started, he was getting ready to commit to Stanford. But then Coach Stuckey called and said, hey, man, I got the job at Notre Dame. I want you to be a part of my, you know, my receiving crew, man. You know, I think we can do big things. I think you can develop here. I think you have a good chance. And so Braylon held off on a commitment to Stanford. And so as the process just kept going and going and going, you know, him and Coach Stuckey, you know, coming by the school, holding conversations, getting to talk to Coach Freeman. And he just fell in love with it, man. He liked Coach Stuckey at Baylor, but he just didn't like Baylor. You know, he didn't want to go to school at Baylor, but he liked Coach Stuckey. So they already had a good, genuine relationship, but he didn't like Baylor. And so once Coach Stuckey got the job at Notre Dame, that opened his eyes up back to Notre Dame. So that put Notre Dame back on the map. And so and the rest is history here right now, man. So, well, well, so, Glenn, so Glenn, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this out there in the universe, and you can either debunk it or you can you know, roll with it, I guess. So it is safe to say, judging by everything you just said, if Coach Stuckey was not at Notre Dame right now, Braylon would not be uh, not be with Notre Dame right now. He would probably be going to Stanford, right? Right, because we had no connection. We had no conversation with the previous staff. We had we we, we didn't you know we didn't have no communication with nobody. We tried, like I said, we tried to get down last summer. Coach Alexander, he didn't get back. He didn't recall. He didn't return any calls, and so we just it was just water under the bridge. But in the beginning of the year, you know, Stanford was the you know the the the, the actual school that we had visited twice. You know, and they were really heavily involved in Braylon. And then we were heavily involved in the education side of it. So, and that's why Stanford was one of the top schools at that time, because they were recruiting for like a year now. And, you know, it's just everything about it. The education side of it was the main factor, really, that he was going to recruit there, because we big on education, not just football. You know, football is football, but education is the number one thing for us. As parents, you know, get this degree and get from a quality education wise. So that's yeah. Amazing. And and that makes complete sense. And, and and the minute that I had heard that Braylon had heavy interest in Stanford, I was like, well, that's a natural fit, right? He's a really talented player. Notre Dame needs wide receivers in this class. And Notre Dame is obviously a great academic institution. Let me ask you about maybe your familiarity with Notre Dame. Like I know it's a national brand. Everybody knows the University of Notre Dame. But how much did you just know about maybe the inner workings of the the, the school or just some of the little nuances to the school before the recruitment of Braylon started? Well, you know, back in my day, you know, I was a big Notre Dame fan. You know, I was a Tony Rice fan, you know what I mean? So I played quarterback growing up in high school and college. So Tony Rice was my guy, you know what I mean? And then also back in the day, I don't know if you probably remember, uh, I grew up in New Orleans, and so we had a uh, my neighbor, Donald Roy, used to play basketball at Notre Dame. 
from out of New Orleans. So back in the 80s when Glenn Doc Rivers was there and all, you know, back in those days. And so he was out my neighbor. We grew up together. And that's how I really became a Notre Dame fan because he attended Notre Dame to play basketball. So that's how I became a Notre Dame fan. So I always was a Notre Dame Oh, I love that, man. So, yeah. I mean, so you were, so you were, I, I don't want to say pushing it, right? But like you were in the back of your mind, you're like, I really want Notre Dame to get involved here, right? Because yes. I got a little, yes. little personal interest there. Yes, yes. I was excited with Coach Stuckey because, you know, I wanted to go to education, but not knocking Stanford, the ball, football has started, looked like it was getting on a decline. And right. I, you know, the education and football work hand in hand at Notre Dame. And so, I was kind of like scooting them that way, man. Let's let's look at this. Let's see what they have to talk about. And it's just a perfect fit for me and my family. I think it's a perfect fit for Brian. Yeah, yeah. No, I really I really love the fit in general. And, and can, I would just love to ask you a little bit about yeah. Coach Stuckey because, like you said, Braylon had got, developed a relationship with him a little bit while he was at Baylor. Then he comes to Notre Dame. It gets stronger, of course. And now we are where we are. But – when Coach Stuckey was first hired, a lot of Notre Dame fans pushed back a little bit because they're like, you know, he's a former Clemson receiver. He played in the NFL, did a good job at Baylor last year, but not a ton of coaching experience and almost no recruiting experience to, to kind of sit back on. What type of person does Notre Dame have here in Chancey Stuckey? He seems like a obviously a young coach that there's still things to prove, but, man, it's, it seems like he has just brought so much energy to this staff since he's become a board. Yeah, Coach Stucky, man, I think, you know, uh, man, he's a good person, man. You know, no, he's a guard friend, friend guy, you know what I mean? He was, you know, on the verge of being a minister, you know, we heavy in faith. And just the communication, man, just constantly calling and talking and getting to know Braylon and, and getting to know us. You know, I, I met him twice. He came up to the high school that Braylon previously attended, Dell Valley. He came there twice. And. We hit it off, man. We probably talked for maybe an hour, hour and a half, just communicating, just talking, just knowing him, knowing his family, he knowing us, knowing about us. And it was just, I feel it just a match made in heaven. And, and he, he refers him to like his mother, you know what I'm saying? He, he has the same mannerism as his mother. He thinks the same, Coach Stuckey thinks the same as, as, as my wife. And so that was big for Braylon also. And just the guy is just a genuine guy, man. He's, he's, he's you know, he's straightforward. You know, he, he loves Braylon. He loves Notre Dame. And we just, we just happy, man. You know, you, I'm, I'm excited. Braylon's excited. We all excited. Man. Coach Stuckey is a good, great guy. I think he's going to do wonderful things there. He's going to get some of the top talents and the top kids. And I think we're going to be, we, we on the verge of winning the national championship within a year or two. Yeah. You know? And I, I had the fortune of talking to Don Schuler, Don Schuler's father. Mm -hmm. And I asked him a similar question about Marcus Freeman, because I, I have, I mean, from the outside perspective, just covering the team, I am so juiced about what coach Freeman can provide to this university and the, the energy that he brings and to the program in just a short amount of time. What is your opinion of on coach Freeman so far in his Notre Dame tenure? You know, we're one game in and an off season in, but the energy and just the atmosphere that he's bringing around Notre Dame, what's your opinion of how high he could take this program? Oh man. Unlimited heights, man. I just think just his energy, the age, you got to realize he's 36 years old. You know what I'm saying? So basically, he can almost relate to the guys he's recru recruiting. It's just like maybe a 16-year difference. And so just the energy, you know, everybody, you know, not knocking other schools and the age of other coaches, but you want a young, vibrant energy coach that can go out there and, 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 and get involved in the, you know, chanting and get involved in the teaching and get involved in the showing. You know what I mean? I just think, I think it's a perfect fit. I just think the landscape of, of, of college recruiting is going to change just by him being at Notre Dame and Notre Dame going to get a lot of these top kids, man. A lot of the top high academic kids, they're going to be at Notre Dame. Notre Dame will be one of the, one of the force to be reckoned with in, in college football for the next four or five years. Yeah. And, I just, and I I want, I want to ask about that recruiting side of it, too, because that's one thing that I'm excited about is Braylon, of course, you know, is a Texas guy, right? Just like you are. And it's exciting because Notre Dame, the previous five cycles, they'd only signed three players from the state of Texas, right? And in this one, they already have two, and they're in a good spot with a couple others. So, I mean, they are going into the Lone Star State this cycle, which is huge. I mean, it is a – just hotbed of talents. And that is proven on the college level, the NFL level. Let mm -hmm. me ask you about, to start with this conversation about the state of Texas, I know some Texas Longhorn beat writers who 
I thought I think for the long time they thought that they had a very good chance at landing Braylon James as far as the Longhorns. Was there much pressure on Braylon to stay in the state of Texas, or was that something that wasn't even really much of a concern for him? That wasn't even a concern. Braylon, when this process first started, even before he even got one offer, he was saying he was leaving. He didn't want to stay here. He didn't want to stay. You know, he wanted to go experience life, you know what I'm saying, and try to grow, you know, and be, you know, try to make it on himself as a man, young man, you know. But that wasn't the pressure, man. You know what I mean? He wasn't a big, you know, not knocking UT, you know, they didn't really, really, really pursue him like, you know, everybody think they did, you know. We never even had a conversation with the head coach. So how, you know, how can you, you know, everybody think he's a UT, you know. Like I said, we we had no interaction with nobody at that staff. That just was an offer. They offered Braylon, and Braylon went up there a couple of times, but it was no mutual interest in UT. You know, and the bad part about it, too, my oldest daughter just graduated from there Saturday, and they didn't even know that. So it was just, it was just, you know, it was just an offer they offered, but they, it was a no mutual interest in him going to UT. They, they didn't even know that your daughter went there. That's they didn't like- even know my daughter went to graduated oh. in three and a half years. They did not know that. So. That that might be a, that that might be a good little tidbit to know while you're recruiting his younger brother. I don't I don't I don't know. Yeah, Maybe that, that, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it, 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 you know, it, it was water under the bridge. He had no interest in UT anyway. Not knocking UT, but he had no interest in going to UT. I got so, that. Well, let let me ask you about the state of Texas because obviously I think it's a huge. <laughs> It's obviously a priority state for me. Notre Dame should be able to get in and get a few players from there every single year. They already have your son. They have Peyton Bowen, who's a very talented mm-hmm. player, obviously, out of there, and Denton Absolutely. Geyer. I know they're going after Jaden Greathouse. They're in a good spot with him, the wide receiver out of Westlake. That they're talking to Micah Bell, who's a really talented cornerback out of the state. Talk to me about how important you feel like it is for Notre Dame to continue to, to get talent out of that state. Because, I mean, I think the – background as far as how they produce talent kind of speaks for itself, but they are getting back into the state this cycle, which is nice to see. I think it's important because uh, it's a good building block, good foundation here in the state of Texas. You could get any type of kid you need, you know, O-lineman, D-lineman. I mean, state, especially the 2023 class, it's loaded with talent, man. I think it's a can't-miss class. You know, I mean, even, I mean, the top 300 kids in the country, I mean, maybe – 56 of them from the state of Texas, and we got there's some talent there, man. I think, I think, uh, with Coach Stuckey being familiar with the area, I think he can can generate some buzz up here. And Braylon can, you know, the guys that's committing, like, like, like Peyton, he's up in up in Dallas area, Braylon's in the in the Austin area, and so they can start, you know, communicate with some of these guys and telling them about, 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 about Notre Dame, man, and about what they have and about what it can do for you, you know, like the four for 40. That's a big thing for me, man. I mean, that was just wide eye opening for me and i think some of the other kids i think they're starting to see you know the, the notre dames and you know what they can bring for them what they can you know what can what it can bring for them you know for us football education wise life after football and so i think you'll see a big difference in coach freeman like i say he's 36 years old man he's a young coach everybody wants their kids around people like-minded people like him and so i think i think i think that we're going to do real well in texas man I think they're going to do real well, real well. Yeah, well, I love that. And I, I feel like there's been, Glenn, this this misnomer about that for a little bit. I feel like Notre Dame bought into it, obviously, a little bit before Marcus Freeman got here, that Texas kids don't want to go to Notre Dame, which obviously is being proved very wrong now. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I mean, I mean, when we got the offer, I was like, man, that's a good school. You know, you know, it's good education. Man. And a lot of and a lot of parents, you know, my age and you talk to is about education now. You know, Brandon could have went to we could have went to Georgia, we could have went to LSU. He had Ohio State, he had all these schools, you know, pursuing him. But for us, it wasn't about football. It was about education, then football. But Notre Dame, you could get the best of both worlds, man. And I was like, man, go for it. You know, we happy, you know, it don't matter where you're at. We, you know, God, you know, we can get there. We can get to you. You know what I mean? It don't matter if you're here or there. You know, we love to travel anyway. So, <laughs> Notre Dame was a good fit, perfect fit for him. And we love it. You know, so. so. So, take me take me back to the visit that Braylon and I, I believe you were on that visit, right? Before mm-hmm. we committed. I think, I think a lot of, uh, mm-hmm. how, how many of your family went up there with him? My wife and my daughter just a, a family of four I was, you know, I was 
intimate family, you know, my wife, him, and my oldest daughter. She, and my oldest daughter, anytime it's a real serious recruit when he's thinking about committing, the oldest daughter always come. My oldest daughter always comes so she can see the school and get the feel for it and see if it's a good feel for her because she's a college student and she knows and her and Berlin is real close. She know he she probably know more about Berlin than what we do. So so <laughs> and so she you know she came along and she toured the campus and. It's just a perfect fit, man. We, you yeah. know, we love it. You know, I don't, like I said, I had no problem with it. I didn't care what the campus looked like. It's Notre Dame, so it's the mecca of football. So it, it didn't, it didn't matter to me what it looked like. You know, so I was just excited for him. He loved it. We loved it. He pulled the trigger. You know, we hear that. Well, and, and so I wanted to ask about the visit because I know it's a great place and a great atmosphere and all that great and all that stuff. But I had always I had heard go, leading up to that event that Breland had heavy interest in Notre Dame. Like it was, you know, he was loving mm-hmm. just the the vibe and everything. And then mm-hmm. he goes up there, and I feel like that solidified it for him. Would you say that's the case, or just like yeah. what, what did that visit do for him? Did it set it over the top? Did they put him yeah, in the lead? Like where was he yeah. before the visit? I guess is my question. You know, I, I don't. I didn't ask him where he was, how he felt about Notre Dame. I just. You know, I try to just stay out and just let him think for itself and figure these things out. So we don't try to with the recruiting stuff. We try to minimize it because it's had gotten kind of stressful for him. And so we try to minimize that talk about recruiting. So I just let him. I didn't go involved. We didn't indulge in it. You know, the dinner table. We didn't talk about it. We talk about something else. And I just let him figure it out. But then the first day we got there in the hotel, he came back. He said, Dad, this is for me. I'm, I'm, I'm loving it here. You know, the first night we got there Friday. So the first night we got there, he's like, yeah, yeah, I feel it. I love it. And I think I'm going to pull the trigger. You know what I'm saying? Let's do it. You know what I mean? I'm ready to get it over with anyway. So he said, Dad, I'm ready to get it over with. Notre Dame is here. This is my home. So let's do it then. So he pulled the trigger. Oh, man. That is so, that's so nice to hear. I, I love it when – when players have interest going up to Notre Dame, that usually just cements it. You know, it's not usually a, a moment you get there and you're like, eh, maybe this isn't for me. Usually that's like, yes, this is, this is the moment. Right. So mm-hmm. I love that you had that moment. So let me ask you about, you know, since then what has kind of happened and transpired because now you're in the class mm-hmm. and Braylon now, I mean, I, I love it because he gets it out of the way. Now he can just keep full vision off. I know he mm-hmm. transferred schools this off season. Yeah. I think, he went back home, so he gets yeah. a tra- he gets to really focus on the se- his senior season and making that the best possible situation he can and all that good stuff. So since that happened, Glenn, since he m- pulled the trigger and committed to Notre Dame, what has it been like around the household? Is he recruiting a ton of players now? What what is his status as far as a part of this program now? Yeah, he's he's big time recruiting. You know, he said, I tell him, I said, man, you need to get, you know, you need to have, how like this guy, man, you know, he's trying to build a team, you know, yeah, you can't do it by yourself. I said, man, you need to talk to how, how you like these guys, like, get these guys up. So, you know, I question him, you know, see who's, who's he recruiting and, you know, what that's like. Are you trying to talk to other people, trying to get other people involved in coming to Notre Dame? But for us, when he, for us, when he committed, we just, you know, we focus on it. Now we have to get back. Focus on track because it was track, it's track season. So we got back focused on track. You know, you still got coaches calling. I don't know who's calling. They call him. They don't call. So, but he's me just straight focus on, you know, Notre Dame and getting better. Now we, we training for football now. So now we're back training and, and everything else is just, it's just trying to graduate and get to Notre Dame, man. Everything else is just, you know, he's excited. You know, he works. He got a little job, so he likes to work. He likes his own money, so he, he goes to work and come home. So we don't really talk about much football. We try to, you know, because he's dealing with a lot of it, so we try to not talk about it at the house when he get home. We don't try to talk about football that much. But he's happy with Notre Dame, man. He's he's just, he's excited, man. He's really excited, man. He's, he, he he wants to tear all the records down at Notre Dame. Every receiving record there is, he says he's going to get it. So without being there, so. <laughs> Exciting, man. Hey, come come get it, man. I'm I'm yeah. welcoming that type of impact. And I don't want to undersell him as, as a track athlete, too, because, I mean, for, for people out there, I, I think I've talked about this before. I was a big football guy, but I was also a track and field guy. I coached it for a long time. So I know Braylon is a, I think, a state, state qualifier and, and a, uh, is a hurdler, right, if I, yeah. if I remember that correctly? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, He finished, finished six, I think, in the hurdles, okay. which was good because he hasn't ran the 110 hurdles since the eighth grade. So when he got there, yeah, he never ran a system like in three years. He said, yeah, I think I'm just going to try to run the 110, you know, because he was 300 meter hurdle. So I said, well, go ahead and try it out. And he just was, 
just moving through, man. Kept advancing and advancing and advancing. I mean, Wiggs excited for him. I didn't think he was going to make it because he hadn't he hadn't trained or ever ran in the one ten hurdle since the eighth grade. And he's like, I think I'm gonna make it there. I said, Well, go ahead on. He made it. So. Braylon seems like one of those kids because I know he's a great student athlete and, and, you know, he excels in track and he's a great football player. Obviously I saw some testing numbers, you know, in the four fours and the 40 high thirties and the vert. He's one of those kids that just has always been good at every sport he's played at. Isn't he? Yes. I mean, man, he's always been that guy since he was like maybe seven. We started out playing flag football at seven and, He's been that guy ever since, man. Just God just blessed him with this talent, this gift he have. I don't know. I mean, hey, he just he just got it, man. He's that guy. He's just that dude, man. No, no matter what team he's on, football, basketball, I mean, he's tried baseball. I mean, track and field. He always excelled at all four sports. And I'm like, wow, I was good, but I wasn't that good. So <laughs> I was good growing up, but I wasn't like you. You you laid the foundation and he yeah, took it to absolutely. a next level. That's absolutely. all it is. That's absolutely. all it is. Yep. Well, Glenn, I, I talked a little bit about, like I said, Peyton Bowen's already in the class. who's a fantastic safety out of Texas. I talked about Jaden Greathouse, Michael Bell, guys that Notre Dame is very high on. Because I'm imagining that those couple other Texas guys are probably some dudes that Braylon is hitting up. You know, like, hey, this is this is the move type of thing. Can you talk to me about the relationship? Does he have any relationships with those guys? I mean, great. does he talk to Great House a ton? Who are some guys that he might be uh, recruiting a little bit right now? I think the receivers, him and Jaden um, – JG are real close because we played against each other. We're in the same district. So, you know, you know, we're in the same district at the previous school that we had the last two years. So he he played against Jalen. And so, and Braylon was friends with some other guys on his team. But since this Notre Dame thing kicked off, so now him and Greyhouse is, you know, they probably talk every day. You know, they probably talk, you know, Braylon in this year, man, you know, come on, man, we can change this thing. We can, we can shock, you know, we can be different, man. Let's go up here and be different, man. You know, let's do something, you know, Bring the state of Texas to Indiana, you know, and that's what he and I think Rico, him and Rico have a really good relationship too. They talk maybe twice a week, you know. And he was talking to Ronnie, but I guess Ronnie decided to, you know, he committed to West Virginia yesterday. But those three guys, those two got three guys, I know that he have a real good relationship, especially Jaden. Him and Jaden is real tight, real close. So. Oh man, that's good to hear. You just, you just mentioned a couple of dudes right there, man. You know, Braylon's yeah. a dude, but Jane Greathouse yeah. is a dude as well. So hoping that Notre Dame's able to continue the momentum they have on the trail. My last question for you is I know that, you know, you, you mentioned Notre Dame fan, and obviously you're a big supporter of education. For any other recruit that's out there, maybe a Rico Flores who mm-hmm. is you know, trending towards Notre Dame, maybe a Jaden Greathouse, or maybe somebody else that we haven't talked about today is listening to this podcast, or just Notre Dame faithful in general. How excited are you about the next stage in Braylon's career? And and just can you sell Notre Dame for a second as far as why it's the best fit for anybody out there listening? Like I said earlier, the four for forty. I mean, that speaks for itself, man. You know, just the. I mean, just by Braylon committing. I mean, I'm meeting so many people, man. I mean, we had track meets, man, and guys, you know, I'm, I'm always in my Notre Dame gear, man. I got the hat on, shirt on, you know what I mean? Everybody's like, man, your son committed to Notre Dame. Oh, man, I'm a graduate of Notre Dame. Where's in San Antonio? A guy gave me a card. Hey, just call me. He need anything. Just give me, just giving me cards. I meet people. The, the guy where he go gets his treatment at, at the cryo place, they're from Chicago. They're big Notre Dame fans. And, yeah, man, he get free cryo now. I don't even know. I didn't know he was, you know, everything. So now he's getting all this stuff for free, like cryo and, you know, Depression and it's just a networking at Notre Dame. Any kid, any parent, you know, for us, me, you know, like my daughter graduated from UT and we ain't get nobody calling her and offering her any jobs or, 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 or in this, you know, just saying, here, I got your back on this or you can, you know, we got to just, you can come work here. It's none of that, man. But at Notre Dame, like I said, we'd have met maybe six or seven people, just genuine people, man. And I think the four for 40, the, the atmosphere, the football, you're going to play big-time football. They play the, one of the toughest schedules every year. I mean, why not Notre Dame? I mean, why not? I mean, it's it's a great institution. Like I said, it's the mecca of football. It don't get no better than that, man. You know, you're playing at Notre Dame, man. I mean, come on, man. <laughs> it, it, that's 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 a, exciting in itself. It's just why wouldn't you want to go there? And I tell any parent, why wouldn't you want to go there? Think big. 
You know, and that's where we are. We we thinking big. You know, we're not thinking the next three, four years. We're thinking beyond, man. And, and I'm excited for my man. I'm excited for Braylon. We're excited for Braylon. I'm excited for Notre Dame. I'm just ready to get this show on the road, man. See where it takes us. And I think he's going. I think he's going to excel. I think he's going to do wonderful things there. I mean, and Braylon is also, you know, Braylon is real talented. He's a music guy. I mean, to be honest with you, he might be better in music than football. Wow. Man, he's super talented, man. He can, he can, he, you know, he he's musically inclined. You know, he's we built him a studio in the house. All he does is just music, man. He records, he makes his own little money. He, guys come over to the house, he records their music, he mix their music. He's very talented, and all this is self-taught. And so he loves music. And so and it's a perfect place for him, man. I, I love it. Education. I'm just excited, man. As you can tell, I'm I'm super excited. I can't wait. I can't wait to get down to June. On an official visit, man. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm excited. Uh, I love hearing that, man. If we ever near, need a new uh, intro music, I guess we have to hit Braille and James up and say, "Oh hey, yeah, brother. definitely, man, definitely." <laughs> he's he's he got, he got some irons in the fire in music too, man. That that Notre Dame set him up with too, for as the music thing goes. And so we I got some that. connection going on with the music, and in a couple of weeks, couple of months, you'll hear some music things coming from Braille and for as music goes in. He's looking forward to that. We're looking forward to that. Yeah. Looking forward to seeing you guys, man. You guys in Indiana or y'all locally or y'all? Uh, well, Brian is in Indiana. I'm in New Jersey, but I'm going to come out for a few games, though. So trust me, I'll, I'm going to I'm going to touch base with you guys and connect for sure. That's no issue at all. So I'm excited too about everything that's happening. Again, going, joined by Glenn James, father of Braylon James, talented wide receiver in the. 2023 class, maybe 2022 class. We'll see what everything happens with the reclassification. But, Glenn, I really appreciate this again, man. This was fantastic. I was only going to keep you for like 15 to 20 minutes or at 30 minutes because this was so fantastic, brother. I really I appreciate it. I love to talk, so especially football. I love to talk football. So love it, brother. thank you for having me, man. I appreciate it anytime. Appreciate you guys. Love you guys' show also.